When we're doing chemistry, we want to be able to determine how much stuff we need to put into a reaction or how much stuff we can make from a given amount of a starting material. We're going to be looking back at the mole to help us out with this. Okay, so first a quick side note on using coefficients in chemical equations. Coefficients are those numbers in front of the chemicals in the equation. Even when there's no coefficient, it's implied that there is one there, the number 1. Let's take a look at a simpler equation to start off with, hydrogen burning in oxygen. Before we do anything, we have to make sure that the equation is balanced. At the moment, we have more oxygen atoms on the left than we do on the right. We can't just stick in an additional oxygen atom, because that would be a different chemical species to the water molecule we already have. We can only change the numbers of the species already present. Let's add an extra water molecule. Now that we have the same number of oxygen atoms on each side, the hydrogen atoms are incorrect. We'll need more on the left. We have to add an extra molecule of hydrogen on the left-hand side. The equation is now balanced. So what do the coefficients actually mean? Well, what we're talking about here is a ratio between the particles. Not only are we talking about two molecules of hydrogen combining with a molecule of oxygen to make two molecules of water, we're more really talking about a ratio within billions of particles. So it's more important to talk about for every. So we can say two molecules of hydrogen will make two molecules of water, but we can also say for every 100, 800 molecules of hydrogen, you'll get 800 molecules of water. And you can also say, most importantly and perhaps most usefully, that for every two moles of hydrogen, you're going to get two moles of water. That's 12 times 10 to the 23 molecules. You can also use halves in your coefficients, but it's really important to notice that you're not actually going to be talking about an individual oxygen atom. We're still talking about ratios. So how much stuff can we get? Let's assume that for some reason you want to make some pure water from hydrogen and oxygen. I mean, there's got to be better ways of doing this, but whatever. Let's assume that you start off with a tiny little gas cylinder of hydrogen, which only holds 200 grams. Okay, so how much water can you make? Will you be able to quench your insatiable thirst? Well, there's only one way to find out. I always like working with tables when I'm doing calculations, and with any calculation, I'd recommend um, organising the numbers of moles and calculating that if you can. Okay, even if you forget everything else in chemistry, you can still show how many moles of substance you have. You might get some working marks, and even if you don't, it might give you a clue as to where you might want to head next. What other pieces of information do we need in order to be able to get the number of moles? Well, we need the relative masses of the species in question. In this question, we're only interested in the ratio between the hydrogen and the water. The oxygen is kind of irrelevant, so before you do any calculations, you might find it appropriate to highlight the chemicals that you're interested in, so you can focus on what's important. Set yourself up a table with the known masses and the relative masses, so that you can calculate the number of moles. We know our relative masses, so we can just whack them in. Note that I've made a big deal of sticking in units all over the place. Although it's a bad habit to stick units in the middle of a table rather than in the column header, I try to write down units everywhere that it's possible in this type of calculation. It helps me focus on what the meaning is of the numbers and helps to stop me writing ridiculous nonsense on the page. Remember that the units also remind you of the appropriate equation to use. If my MR is 2 grams for every mole, that means that the MR is mass divided by moles. Step 1 is to find the number of moles of the known substance. Here we have 200 grams, and 1 mole weighs 2 grams. Stop and think for a second. Are we expecting here to get more than 1 mole as our answer, or less than a mole? It sounds like a really dumb thing to think about, but when the numbers get more complicated, um, it's really good to do this kind of little expectation calculation in your head. Okay, so we've got our moles is equal to our mass divided by our MR. That's 200 grams over 2 grams per mole gives us two, excuse me, gives us 100 moles. Okay, so the next step is to have a look at the ratio in which these combine. So we have 2 moles of hydrogen gas producing 2 moles of water. So that means that for every 100 moles we put in, we're going to get 100 moles out. Okay, our last step then is to try and fill in the missing gap, which of course here is our mass of water. 
Now we can rearrange our equation once more, and we get mass is equal to moles times mR. That's 18 grams per mole times 100 moles gives us 1,800 grams of water. So that's like 1.8 litres, or um, of course 1.8 kilograms. So that's all very well. But what happens if you're given more information? Take a look at this example here. We've got three molecules of hydrogen and only one molecule of oxygen. One of these things is going to be in excess, and one of these things is going to be limiting. So let's have a look at our perfect sort of mixture here. Here we've got two hydrogen molecules and an oxygen molecule, and that's making two water molecules. Neither thing is in excess. We have the correct stoichiometric proportions. Nothing is limiting, nothing is in excess. Let's have a look at this other example though. Perhaps we have some extra oxygen, excuse me, some hydrogen, sorry. So if we've got a little bit of extra hydrogen, that hydrogen is going to be left over at the end of the reaction. We'd say that the oxygen is limiting and the hydrogen is in excess. If we want to work out the maximum amount of water we can produce, we want to be looking at how many moles of oxygen we've got. The hydrogen isn't going to be affecting it. So let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example. Here we've got some hydrogen and some nitrogen being producing, uh, producing some ammonia. I'm going to set out the table like I did before. Our job is to work out how much ammonia we can produce. In this case, we've got three grams of um, hydrogen and we've got um, some 28 grams of nitrogen. How are we going to work out how much ammonia we can produce? Because we've actually got two pieces of information here. So the first step is to work out how many moles of each of the two things you've got. Here we see we've got one and a half moles of hydrogen present and we've got one mole of nitrogen present. Now, the hydrogen is going to be limiting because if you think about it, if we've got one and a half moles of hydrogen, okay, the maximum number of moles of nitrogen we can use is one and a half divided by three, half a mole. But actually we've got a whole mole here, so we've actually got twice as much nitrogen as we, can, as we actually need. So to simplify things, okay, we're going to focus on the hydrogen and the ammonia, and I'm going to sort of make the nitrogen stuff a little bit paler. Now we've got our one and a half moles of hydrogen. We've identified what is the limiting thing in this equation. We can look at our ratio between the hydrogen and the ammonia. Now it's not one to one or two to two anymore, it's three to two. So to find out how many moles, we're gonna divide by three and multiply by two. So one and a half divided by three gives us a half, multiplied by two, that gives us one. Okay, so we're gonna be able to produce one mole of ammonia. And at 17 grams per mole, that means we're gonna have 17 grams of ammonia in our reaction. Okay, so there we have it. We've got um, working out reactant masses and also looking at what the limiting reagent is in any given reaction. Have fun.